In this video, we're gonna take a look at Fluvid, a screen recording tool that's completely free and quite possibly a competitor to Loom and Screencastify. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Cook's Corner, Education for Educators. This channel is all about helping teachers like you grow in your craft. If this is your first time watching, welcome aboard. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy what you see today. Okay, I know we're all looking for the latest and greatest thing, especially when it comes to online screen recording software. We've got Loom, we've got Screencastify, we've got Screenomatic, but I found a new one called Fluvid that's actually pretty cool. We're gonna take a look at the pros and the cons and see if it's worth your time as a teacher to use as another tool to record what you're doing online. Let's jump in right now and take a deep dive. So here we are at the fluvid.com homepage. Sign up button's right here in the corner. I'm gonna get signed up real quick. After my one click sign up, I'm already on my dashboard. It looks pretty nice. We've got a folder section, a video section. I'm also seeing two calls to action to add it to my Chrome account through a extension. So I'm gonna do that very quickly. And after a few clicks, I do have this activated up here as a Chrome extension. So I've just gone to the Google homepage and I'm gonna click on the extension button to see what happens. And it appears like we have a screen recording set up. So once I've chosen my camera and microphone, which is just a basic thing that you'll have to do initially, it looks like I've got some choices. But for the basic, I've got screen only, cam only or screen and cam. So let's do a combination of screen and cam. I also have two choices of full desktop or current tab. When I click on the advanced options, it looks like it gives me a timer countdown, which is pretty convenient. So I can choose a timer to get myself set up. It looks like I also have options to mess with drawings, the control menu. Looks like I have keyboard shortcuts as well if I want to activate it. Down in the corner, I see myself. Looks like I can make different sizes. And for the sake of this video, folks, you're not seeing my camera right here because I'm actually recording this for the YouTube video. So I'm going to pause this video and record by hitting start recording. And then I'll come back and we'll see what we got. Okay, so once I hit stop, it immediately popped up a screen and processed the video. It did not take very long at all. And I should get immediate playback, let's see. And here we are, as you can see, I've got the camera. Yep, there we are, so we do have a full video. If I scroll down, it looks like I can give my video a description. I can edit the title of it. I can give it some tags, and then I can add comments. So looking at the bottom, we've got some downloading and sharing options. We can download it, we can embed it. I'm gonna test that in a second. We can move it from folder to folder. We can get a shareable link, and we can throw it in the trash. Let's test out the embed code. I'm gonna click on it. And here's the code right here, just click copy. One thing I noticed that I do like is that it gives you the opportunity to change the width and the height. It also has two sets of code and now I am not a coding master, so I see there is a responsive and a fixed. I'm gonna try them both. The best way for me to test this is just on a simple Google Sites, so I'm gonna click on embed and I'm gonna stick in the embed code. I'm gonna try the same thing with fixed. Here I am on my published site, and if I click play, and here we are, as you, and here we are, as you can see, both versions work. So we've confirmed that the embed code works. Now let's take a look at the shareable link. I'm gonna go into a incognito window and just paste it to see what happens. And it takes me to a fluvid screen that says it's private, so it looks like I need to set the sharing recordings. So back on the main page, I'm looking to see if I can change settings, and it's right here under privacy. I like to just do limited access, you need the link. And you also have the option to add a password. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna make it easy one. I also have the ability to invite people. I don't think I'd use that personally, but it is a nice little touch. So back in my incognito window, let's test that link again with updated privacy settings. And here it is, it pops up, but it is password protected. And I click play. Too small, I can move it around. It works perfectly fine. The quality is, it's not quite 1080, but it looks really good. Before we jump back into the video, I'd like to mention that I'm getting a lot of comments and emails from teachers saying that they have no more space in their Google Drive to hold any of their videos that they've been recording. They've maxed out their Loom, their Screencastify, and they're looking for a solution. I've got a video for that right here. It's all about how to use YouTube to get infinite storage when it comes to any type of video that you film tutorials, how-tos, all the things that you show in class. Okay, let's get back to it. Up next are the editing capabilities of the software, as well as the million dollar question, 
How long can I record for? So when I look at my tools, I've got crop, thumbnail, call to action, settings, and trim. If I click on settings, I can set it to viewers can or can't view stats, viewers can or can't view comments, they can add comments, or they can download it, and that's off, which is good. I don't necessarily want people downloading the videos, but you can turn that on. Let's test the crop tool out. And as you can see, it's got a useful little tutorial here. I'm gonna be able to take out irrelevant bits of the video. Let's test it. So I've taken the little slider bar and set it to start at 11, end at 48. I'm gonna hit crop. All right, so it looks like once you do it, it overrides the original video. Why not? Let's try it. Move it around. And as you can see, the crop worked effectively. It's now a 37 second video where it was a little bit longer beforehand. So the crop button works well. I'm wondering how trim is different. So let's take a look at trim. Another tutorial, and it says kind of the same thing. I have the same yellow lines. I've set the time from 12 to 16, so I'm wondering if it's gonna do the same thing. Let's click trim. One thing I will give it credit for though is I did go back to the Google site to see if it updated my video automatically and as you can tell here it did. So next up is the thumbnail. If I click on that it lets me pull up a picture choice and I'm going to choose one and here's the thumbnail. So that's pretty cool. Testing the call to action button and it looks like it gives me a direct button to send me somewhere. So I put an example of click here. I'm going to link it to Google. I just have the standard color. Here's the preview. I'm going to add the call to action. And as you can see, it puts a button right here in the top corner that is a legit call to action. So you could put a link somewhere else. Perhaps click on this after you watch the video or go here for more. When I click on it, new window takes me exactly to the link that they put up. That is super cool. One of the last things I want to check is the storage space and how long our videos can be. So in the top right corner, I see my face and it looks like there's going to be some settings that I want to check out. I'm not going to investigate live on this one, but I'm going to go into my account. And here is the answer that we want right here. 10 gigabytes storage under a free plan. So it looks like as long as I keep my recordings under 10 gigabytes, I can use this for free. Now that's going to be handy for a little bit as long as you manage your recordings. However, if you record as much as some teachers are with the distance learning, it may become an issue. One thing I did notice though is that no matter where I look, there is no place to get a premium account. It says the free storage plan is 10 gigs, but I am unable to find anywhere where they offer a purchasing option. So it looks like this is still a work in progress. But as far as comparing to Screencastify and Loom and others, this does rank up there. You can use this. You could totally have more than one account. It's a great product, it looks like. As always, we got tons more where that came from. Check out one of these two videos right here to get yourself started. In the meantime, we're all over social media at Mr. Cook's Corner. If you have questions, comments, video ideas, things that you'd like answered, let us know. Gareth at MrCooksCorner.com. Till next time, see you later. Bye.